Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, the great name, the heavenly name, the mighty and powerful name, the name that is greater than any other name on the, on the whole universe. Lord, we come in that name, in the authority of that name. Tonight, magnify the name in every life in Jesus' name. Any sickness, any problem, the name of Jesus is mightier and higher. And you will crush every mountain through that name tonight in Jesus' name. Bless your people more than ever before. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. We're looking at Luke chapter 1. And I'm reading from verse 68. Luke chapter 1 verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel for he has visited and redeemed his people. This is the glorious day of divine visitation. The glorious day of God's visitation. As I look at this verse, here was Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, giving praise to the Lord, giving glory to the Lord, because God has come to visit his people. Zechariah was a priest of the Lord. He knew the promise of God in the Old Testament. He knew the prophecies that had gone on in the Old Testament. And he knew what God was going to do. He was full of expectation. And now the time had arrived. He knew that the fulfillment of the promises of God was now coming to reality. That's why as his tongue loosed and opened, he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Because he has visited and redeemed his people. In verse 69, it begins to tell us now the result of that visitation from heaven. And has raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. One result of the visitation of God is salvation being available for everyone. Verse 70, as he spake by the mouth of the solely prophets, which have been since the world began. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Is rejoicing because God's visitation brings deliverance. Personal deliverance. National deliverance. Lifetime permanent deliverance. Then in verse 72. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. He's telling us that when there is God's visitation, all the promises the Lord has made from the time of Abraham until now is the time of fulfillment of the promises. Mm -hmm. 
Verse 73, the oath which he swear to our father Abraham. That he would grant unto us that we been delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. Zacharias is telling us that when God visits us, he delivers us from all the powers, all the attacks, all the affliction, all the curse, all the spell, all the poison of all enemies. And it makes it possible for us to serve the Lord without fear. Fear of evil, fear of the devil cancelled in our lives in Jesus' name. To serve the Lord without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our lives. When you read that verse, it's telling us that God's visitation brings something in very special. There were only a few people in the Old Testament that were able to serve God in holiness, righteousness, all the days of their lives. Very, very few. Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Joseph, Moses, Joshua, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Very, very few. Of course, a few others like Samuel. But now, in the time of God's visitation, it tells us that all of us now, not just a little handful of people, everyone can serve the Lord without fear in holiness and righteousness before God all the days of our lives. That's why I'm talking to you this time on the good news of God's visitation. The great news of God's visitation. The glorious news of God's visitation. That you can have a privilege that the Old Testament people did not have. The visitation of the Almighty God. That comes to your life. And something special, spectacular, and serious comes upon your life. The good news of God's visitation. There are three things we're going to talk about. Number one, the purpose of God's visitation. When God visits you, God never does anything without a purpose. And as he comes to visit us, he has a plan. He has a purpose. The purpose of God's visitation. Number two. The purity from God's visitation. God is pure. God is clean. God is holy. And when God visits a person, visits a house, visits a church, visits a community, 
his nature cleanses and purifies and sanctifies that community. Number three, the privilege from God's visitation. The privilege we have. He does not just visit us, he establishes a covenant, a partnership with us. And he says, because I visit you, and because you have received my visitation, he makes a pact, a covenant, an agreement, a league with us. He wants to have this partnership with us. As a result, I have seen you and you love me and you accept my visitation. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Number one, the purpose. Number two, the purity. Number three, the privilege. Number one now, the purpose of God's visitation. We're told in 1 John chapter 3. I'm reading from verses 8 and 9. Here God declares when he visits us, he has a purpose in mind. And as the Lord has come to visit you in a very personal way this time, he has a purpose in mind. And he tells us in 1 John 3 verse 8. 1 John 3 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. He appeared, he came to us, he visited us, that he might destroy the works of the devil. The purpose of God's visit in your life is that every activity of the devil will be nullified. Every action of the devil will be cancelled. Every seed that the devil has been plotting and planning and he wants to destroy you, when God visits you for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Sickness is the work of the devil. Tonight it is destroyed. Attack, work of the devil. Tonight it is destroyed. Affliction, work of the devil. Tonight it is destroyed. All the oppression, affliction in your life, something pressing you down in the night, something meeting you in the farm, and then doing some mysterious thing, it's the work of the devil. Tonight, it is destroyed in Jesus' name. Closed doors. You try to go here, the door is closed. Go here, the door is closed. Hindrances everywhere. The work of the devil tonight, they are destroyed in Jesus' name. Have you ever heard a young person having diabetes, a teenager? Having diabetes in the olden days, in the old, old people that used to have diabetes, that used to have cancer, that used to have this and that, but now the devil wants to distribute to everybody and he says, get this one, get this one. Tonight I come to give you the good news, all that work of the devil in your body.
all the work of the devil in your family. Christ has a right to destroy every sin in Jesus' name. A person having a desire for progress, a desire to move forward, but there's always an invisible hand, invisible force, pulling him back. I want to go. It's pulling him down. That's the work of the devil. Tonight, we come to demonstrate the plan of God and the purpose of God's deliverance and God's visitation. All that hindrance to purpose and progress in your life is destroyed in Jesus' name. All the mysterious things you cannot explain. Like Job could not explain. Like the wife of Job could not understand. Like the friends of Job could not understand. It was a mystery. Why is this happening to me? The death of children. And the burning up of the farm. And all those terrible, terrible things. And the friends came and they tried to give explanation. Nobody could give a satisfactory explanation. Problems rising up. Philosophy cannot explain. Psychology cannot explain. Hospital cannot explain. Mysterious is the work of Satan. Tonight is the night. I said tonight is a night because for this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy all the works of the devil. When God appears to an individual when God visits an individual, he has a purpose. When God visits a family, and there is divine visitation on the family, he has a purpose. When God visits a local church, God has a purpose. And as God has come to visit you in your beautiful city here, there is a purpose, that purpose will be fulfilled. The powers that keep this community backward, that power is broken tonight in Jesus' name. Love is of God, hatred of, is of the devil, all the spirit of hatred, all the spirit of confusion, all the spirit of clashes, all the spirit of communal uh, kind of crisis, the Lord has come to visit your city and to come to visit your state, they are, they are destroyed, they are broken, they are brought down in Jesus name. There's one man. His name was Saul of Tarsus. He didn't know what was working inside him. He had so terrible hatred for Christ and for Christians. And he went everywhere to do the work of destruction. He was possessed by the spirit of Satan and uh, hatred. 
he, he left his normal job he made his full time job to destroy the work of God and then as he was going on his way to Damascus he had a divine visitation the Lord visited him tonight the Lord will visit you and the Lord told him, I have visited you for a purpose. Divine visitation has a purpose. Acts chapter 26 verse 16. Acts 26 verse 16. Rise and stand upon thy feet. For I have appeared unto thee. I have visited you. I have revealed my divine visitation to you for this purpose. I have appeared unto you for a purpose. And the Lord is appearing to you tonight for a purpose. And that divine purpose will be realized in your life from tonight in Jesus' name. There's going to be a turning around in your life. This day marks the beginning of a brighter future in every one of your lives. For this purpose to make thee a minister and a witness both of the things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee. I will appear unto thee. The Lord said this is the beginning of divine visitation. He will come again to you. He will visit you again. He will appear to you again. Divine power will never leave your life anymore. Verse 17. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom I now send thee. You know what he's saying there? He's saying you have deliverance today and for the rest of your life, anytime you need deliverance, I'll be there. You're delivered in Jesus' name. In verse 18, to open their eyes. Your own eyes are opened already. You'll become God's instrument to open the eyes of other people. And to turn them from darkness unto light. The Lord has visited you to turn you from darkness to light. You will become a witness of the Lord. An agent of the Lord to turn other people from darkness to light. And from the power of Satan unto God. That they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me, in Christ. Number one, the purpose of God's visitation. Tonight, the works of the devil are destroyed. Darkness vanishes away in your life. Light comes in your life. And every good thing you desire, this visitation of God, brings it to your life in Jesus' name. Number two, the purity from God's visitation. Isaiah chapter 6 When God visits us There's another thing that happens Number one There is a purpose Number two There is purity 
Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon his throne high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. I saw the Lord. The Lord broke through into his world. He was still here on earth. He has not gone to heaven. The Lord came and revealed himself unto Isaiah. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he did he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the lord of hosts the whole earth is full of his glory and the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried and the house was filled with smoke Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. The king of glory appeared unto him. A divine visitation. He said, my eyes have seen. I've seen the king. The king of glory. The prince of peace. He appeared unto me. He gave me an heavenly visitation. Then he said, I'm undone. I see my uncleanness, my uncircumcised tongue. I see my shortcoming. Remember, he was not a sinner like every other sinner. He was already saved. He was a prophet. And as you read this prophecy from chapter 1, he was calling the people, come, come now, and let us reason together, says the Lord. If your sins be as scarlet, they'll be made as white as snow. If they are red like crimson, they'll be as white as wool. He had repented. He was calling others to repentance. He was saved. In chapter 3, he was calling the people to run away from godliness. The man was a prophet. He was saved. In chapter 5, he was talking to the people that were drunkards. And he said, judgment is coming. Stop all the drinking. Repent. Come to the Lord. The man was saved. But he had not been sanctified. He had not been purified. And when he had holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. All of a sudden he realized I need another second touch of the Lord.
and he revealed and confessed his need of holiness and sanctification to the Lord. Then in verse 6, then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongues from off the altar. That is the altar of God in heaven. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, behold, this has touched thy leaves. Thine iniquity is taken away. Thy sin is purged. That's the second experience of grace the Lord wants to perform in your heart. Saved, you need to be sanctified. Pardoned, you need to be purified. Already, the Lord has forgiven you. He wants to make you free and free indeed in your heart, in your soul, in your mind, internally. He wants that work of grace to be done in your heart. It talks about iniquity in singular. It talks about the sin in singular. It's the kind of nucleus, the origin, the root, the body of sin. Taken away, tonight it will happen to you. This is what Christ has provided for you. And this day of divine visitation makes it available for you. Titus chapter 2. Reading from verse 14. Titus chapter 2 verse 14. It says, who gave himself for us. That he might redeem us from all iniquity. That's the word. And purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. When the live coal touched his lips. And then announcement came from heaven. Your sin purged. Your iniquity taken away. In verse 7 of Isaiah chapter 6. He said in verse 8. And also I heard the voice of the Lord saying. Whom shall I send? I singular. Who will go for us? Plural. That's the divine trinity right there. Then said I, here am I. Send me. As God visits you, purity of heart will come. Sanctification will come. It will make you holy through and through. Acts of the Apostles chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 9. Acts chapter 15 verse 9. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Number one, the purpose of God's visitation. Number two, the purity from God's visitation. Number three now, the privilege of God's visitation. When God visits us, it's not a hit and run affair. 
It's not just a guest for a day and it's gone. He wants to develop a relationship with you. A partnership with you. He comes to bless. And he comes to dwell. He comes to touch your life. And he comes to stay. He comes to pardon you. He comes to purify you. And he comes to generate the power in your life day by day. He wants to establish a partnership with you. What a great privilege that the Almighty comes to you and he says, I will stay with you. I will abide with you. It's not just like you go to a crusade in an evening and then after that evening, everything is forgotten. He will go home with you. I said he will go home with you. He will abide with you. Every problem that may come up any day, he will solve them in Jesus' name. The privilege of God's visitation. Isaiah chapter 41. I'm reading from verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Permanent. Partnership with God. I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. From this time, your weakness will flee away. The strength of the Lord will come upon your life in Jesus' name. Yea, I will help thee. From this very time now, you'll keep on having the help of God every day in every situation of your life. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. I thought you were going to say amen. It says in verse 11, Behold, all they that were incensed and angry against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive against thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shalt not find them. Even them that contended with thee. They that war against thee shall be as nothing. And as a scene of naught. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand. I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand. Where is your right hand there? I say, where is the right hand there? There's an invisible hand of the Almighty God holding that hand. It will keep you from falling. And when you are about to fall into any pit that Satan or the messengers of Satan have dug, and you didn't know, he'll hold your right hand, he'll pull you up. That's the privilege of partnership we have with the Lord. And then he tells us, fear not, verse 13, I will help thee. Verse 14, fear not thou womb Jacob and ye men of Israel. 
For the third time is reminding us, I will help thee, says the Lord. From now on, heaven's help will always be available for you. The Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Verse 15, Behold, I will make you a new, sharp, threshing, threshing instrument. New, sharp, threshing instrument having tears. Thou shalt thresh the mountains. Are you there? Thou shalt thresh the mountains. And beat them small. And shall make the hills as chaff. Thou shalt find them. And the wind shall carry them away. The wild wind will scatter them. Thou shalt rejoice in the Lord. The days of laughter are started today joy happiness gladness laughter and shall glory in the holy one of israel because of divine visitation isaiah chapter 54 verse 17 as the lord has visited you today and he has established a partnership with you Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17 From today No weapon that is formed against us Shall prosper And every tongue That shall rise against thee In judgment thou shalt Condemn This is the heritage Of of the servants of the Lord and the righteousness is of me says the Lord today you know that God has singled you out you are the peculiar people of God you carry something precious your life is special you cannot just go here and there because now he has promoted you and lifted you up on high he will go with you everywhere he will abide with you for the rest of your life you are now to live as a special child of god any challenge christ will be there he will help you. Where are you? He will help you. I said, where are you? He will help you. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. That's the good news of God's visitation. The good news is mine. 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 Where are you? Stand up and rejoice in that good news. Stand up and rejoice in that good news. The good news of God's visitation. The purpose. The purpose. The purity. The privilege. Open your mouth and say, Lord, I thank you. I've got it. Th thank the Lord. I have got it. All the works of the devil are destroyed. All the power of the enemy is spoken. My sins are gone. I am pardoned. I am purified. I have partnership with God. Tell the Lord. 
the problems are over. The tears are cleaned up. Your sorrow is gone. Your suffering has come to an end because of the good news of God's visitation. He has saved you. Praise the Lord, I am saved. Praise the Lord, my sins are forgiven. Praise the Lord, my name is rich in the book of life in heaven. Then he says, I want to sanctify you too. I want to purify you. I want to make you holy. I want to cleanse you in your heart. I want to purge all your sin away. I want to make you holy within and without. Transparent. Transparent. Inward holiness. Heart purity. Complete holiness. Complete sanctification. Entire sanctification. He will sanctify you. And then the partnership we have with the Lord. The river will not drown you. The fire will not burn you. And every weapon that is fashioned against you will come to naught. Every evil power directed against you will be neutralized. Rejoice in the Lord for what he has done. He has called you to his side. Now be a unique, special, peculiar child of God. You are free. You are free. I'm free indeed. You are free. I'm free indeed. You believe that, say amen. Raise up those blessed hands. The hand that the Lord said he will uphold. He will not allow you to fall. He will keep you. And until that final day. When you will see him in glory. He will keep on giving you visitation upon visitation upon visitation. Father in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this glorious day. And for this glorious moment, I present everyone here before you. I'm asking, Lord, according to your promise, those who have repented, those who are repenting, forgive them, pardon them, save them in Jesus' name. I pray for those who are saved. That they will move forward to this next experience, the second work of grace. Purity of heart, holiness of heart, sanctification coming from the hand of the Almighty God. Lord, sanctify the saved people in Jesus' name. Make everyone heart and life holiness unto the Lord. In the private holiness, in the public holiness, in the life holiness, in the heart holiness, at home holiness, in the church holiness, in the office holiness, holiness unto the Lord in Jesus' name. Lord, your covenant with us, that you will be with us. You will be a personal friend, a personal companion. You will never leave us. You will never forsake us. Fulfill it in every life in Jesus' name. No river can drown you. And for everyone you have partnership with, no river will drown any children, any of the children of God, in Jesus' name. No fire will burn you. And for every one of the children of God, when they pass through any fire, it will not touch them. It will not burn them. It will not consume them. They will be refined and purified and going on, marching forward into progress in Jesus' name. Acts 
accidents cannot touch you and for anyone associated with you anyone in partnership with you accident will not kill them accident will not stop their life lord victory over accidents in jesus name satan cannot destroy christ satan cannot destroy god anyone associated with god anyone in partnership with god from today every weapon that is formed against you will come to naught lord you protect everyone make everyone strong everyone healthy everyone provided for let the joy of the lord be the strength of your people in jesus name from today the purpose of god is fulfilled in your life the purity of the lord is given unto you a partnership with the lord will be with you until you see him face to face in jesus name from today you are an overcomer from today you are more than a conqueror he has lifted you up you will not fall you will not go back you'll keep on serving the lord until the glorious day confirm your blessing upon every life lord we thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray and everybody shout you are blessed